Okay, so this is my Xbox Series S and I've currently got a physical hard drive plugged into it. This is a 500 gig drive with a load of ROMs on it and I'll show you what it looks like on the screen capture. So this is developer mode on my Xbox and uh, to get into developer mode, you have to download the developer mode app from the store and register as a developer. The app costs about 14 pounds. Uh, so it's pretty reasonable. What it then allows you to do is run universal Windows platform apps. Uh, and these are apps that people can write themselves. If you know about coding, you can write yourself. Uh, but other people also write the apps and then you can download them from various websites that they're available from. You can see I've got three on here at the moment, PPSSPP, Retrix and RetroArch. And if I press the home button, you can see that they have icons as well so you can launch it from the icons. But none of my other games are here, so when you're in this mode, you can't use your ordinary games. But when you boot out of this mode, then it will go back to the Xbox working as normal. And when you log out of this, it'll also give you the option of deleting all these apps. So I've already got three things on here, but I wanna upload one more thing to it. So what I do is go onto my iPad. There is a website, xbox1-hq.com, uh, and there's various different things on here, as you can see, chip emulator, Nestbox emulator, PPSSPP, and so on. Uh, and so the other one that I've downloaded is this Win64, which is a port of Moopin64+. So I've already downloaded it onto my iPad. So what I need to do is open up another tab uh, and I need to log into my Xbox. Now, you can see at the bottom of the screen there's a remote access IP address. That's what you type in, exactly that, into your browser. And you can do this pretty much on any Android phone iPhone, iPad, Windows computer, whatever you choose, it will give you like remote access. This is a bit like the way that you would log into your router. If you wanted to change some settings on your router, you'd put in an IP address and you would you would change the settings. So you can see here, uh, I've got uh, Xbox Live test accounts at the bottom here, which I'll have to, I'll have to blur out. Uh, but if I want to add games and apps, hit add, hit choose file. Uh, I'm going to go for browse. And you can see this is showing my downloads folder on my iPad. And this is the app, Win64E10. Tap on that, and you can see that it's there. Hit Next, and hit Start. You can upload individual files and folders in this exact way to the Xbox and put them in the correct place, but I tend to run it from the physical hard drive that you've seen before. So package successfully registered, hit Done. Uh, and now I don't need my iPad for this bit, so I'm gonna turn that off. So let's try this. I haven't used this before, uh, so I'm gonna click on Win64, and you can see it's asking me to add a ROM. So I need to go to import uh, local storage. So let's try that. Yeah, and at the bottom is my USB device. So I can click on that. Uh, I know my ROMs are in this recall box folder. This is something I use with my Raspberry Pi. Uh, so there's a load of ROMs on here. So go into ROMs, go down to, oh, there's too many systems on here, N64. And I guess I just pick a ROM. So let's pick Mario Tennis. Now this doesn't work on everything Mario Tennis uh, with emulators. It's a harder one to, to get. Oh, maybe I have to do select ROM directory first. Try that. Ah, here we go. This is a bit different. It doesn't seem to be able to select anything. Maybe I have to use mouse and keyboard for this. So I'm gonna leave this one and I'll come back and try it in another video. Yeah, I can't. whatever button I press, I can't seem to get that to work. So what I'm gonna do is press the Xbox button and I'm gonna close that out, down and have a look back at it at another time. Maybe I need to put the ROMs in there separately, maybe you need to use mouse and keyboard, but let's show you some things that do work. Retrix, which is a PlayStation emulator, uh, and if I go into settings, uh, there is settings, there is uh, a section for BIOS files, and you can see here that most of them are, uh, the BIOSes haven't been added, but the ones that are gray, PlayStation there and PlayStation, and PlayStation, so three of them I've added the ROMs to, so they should work fine now. It looks like it thinks it's touch control, doesn't it? I don't know if that's touchpad. I'll say no to that. Maybe that will give me joypad controls. Hopefully it will. All of this seems to be working, but I'm not sure if I've got any controls. Oh yeah, I have. Okay, so you need to turn off that touch uh, because it's assuming that it's using touch because these universal Windows apps would work with a Windows tablet or uh, when, you, when they used to do Windows smartphones. Here we 
to go, so it seems to be working fine. <laughs> and then to quit out of that, if I press the Xbox button, I can just click on here and quit, and that takes me very quickly back to the menu. Because remember that, apart from the games, the operating system is all running from an SSD now, so it is nice and fast. So that was Retrix. Uh, well, let's try one more uh, system on there. Let's go for SNES, because I don't think I've tried SNES yet. Super Nintendo. Again, go down, go to ROMs. Now you could make this uh, only for the systems that are available on here, uh, and that would make it a lot easier to find. Let's pick something I recognize. Try a bit of tennis. Again, I haven't configured anything on this. I've literally just installed it the same way as I installed that N64 emulator. Oh, we have the same settings thing here, look. So touchpad needs to be off, obviously. Let's go pro, even though I've, I don't think I've played this one before. Oh, good start. It's the digital pad that you use on this. Of course, fast. One more. <laughs> Rubbish. Right, so uh, let's close that down. Uh, Retrix and quit. And let's go for uh, the PSP emulator because that is a particularly good one. Uh, and this works really well on here. So. Again, I have to look for it in a different way. So I've got to go to load. I've got to go down to the USB, find the ROMs. There it is. And I've been playing God of War. Uh, and I haven't messed about too much with the settings on this. It seems to be working very well. Uh, if I press the uh, home button, no. Yeah, if I press the, the B button on the Xbox controller, I can get this. So I don't know if I have to reconfigure that because I'm sure the B button would be used. Here we go. So you can see 61 FPS. Uh, it's I think it's on two times, so it's it's upscaled a bit, so it looks all right on a TV screen. Might turn that down a little bit as it's super loud. So left to block. Oh, wrong. <laughs> so that's why the B button is not the best one. Uh, so I need to configure that somehow. But as you can see, God of War, which is a great game on PSP working really well. I'm oh, happy with that. And nice and smooth, and I think the sound sounds all right as well. So let's uh, go home on that, and click on that, and quit. See, it's all very fast. Uh, so let's go back, and try RetroArch, which is the only one I haven't tried yet in this video. Now RetroArch always takes a bit of setting up um, and uh, if I go over you'll see that various different ROMs are showing up but it seems to have a, an issue trying to find them. So if I pick N64 and let's go for Off-Road Challenge and run. I think it will come up saying it can't find it. Oh well, no, it might be working. Yeah. So for some reason it can't find it. Now I'm not sure why that is, but if I go into uh, scan directory and I'll open up that USB drive. So if I do select, scan this directory and it will search through all the ROMs and it just kind of tells RetroArch where they all are, 287. You can see it's nice and quick, even though it's coming from a physical drive. Obviously N64 games are tiny, but still quite hard to emulate. N64 on lots of systems uh, doesn't run as fast as it should. And weirdly, I, I play um, Destruction Derby on this as well, and uh, it slows down in exactly the same place as it does on the Raspberry Pi. So I think it's just something to do with the emulators rather than the power of the system, because obviously this Xbox is, is actually really quite powerful. Let's go back. And try again. Looks like it's going to work this time. Okay, so it seems to be working all right. It seems to be quite a reasonable speed. Seems pretty responsive. 
I tried it with the analog stick and it's very jerky, but with the digital pad, uh, it's definitely more reliable. So let me know in the comments if you get any other emulators to work uh, on the Xbox Series S or Series X. But uh, it's looking impressive, even at this very early stage. It's great to see all these up and running. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.